Chapter 8, Final Exams After the incident in Hosu City, Gran Torino knew that his pupil was hiding something even though he tried questioning him about it Izuku wouldn't break. His training felt barbaric at times and made him feel like he was going to die but it paid off in the end. Thanks to his teachings Izuku is now able to use his quirks while in battle, it uses a lot of his stamina in the process. It took three more grueling days, but Izuku was finally able to match Gran Torino's speed and land an attack on him without passing out right after. On his last day of his internship Gran Torino stood in front of his student and said. You're just as much of a handful like Toshinori was and yet I can see you're going to surpass him one of these days. Izuku bowed and just said. Thank you for everything you taught me, and I promise to pay you back for your refrigerator I damaged. Izuku sweat dropped after saying that to his teacher, but the pro said. Don't worry about it just promise to tell me what really happened with the hero killer one of these days. Izuku looked at him and then said. I have no idea what you're talking about sir. He waved at his sensei one last time before walking away, Gran Torino then remembered he needed to call Toshinori about what he had learned. On the morning of the students' first day back after their internships, Ida and Todoroki received a text message from Izuku to meet outside of Jim Beta before homeroom. As Shoto arrived he saw Ida just ahead of him meeting up with Midoriya, once he got close, he greeted the two. Now that they both were present Izuku said. Were there any problems with your alibis? Ida spoke first. Manuel was persistent but he eventually took my word for it. Todoroki responded with. My old man only hears what he wants, after I told him what happened he dropped the subject immediately. Izuku noticed that they were finished speaking and replied with. Okay now Ida, we promise we won't tell anyone what you did but you have to talk with someone about how you're feeling. I know how difficult it is dealing with all those emotions you have bottled up, but they're just going to eat you alive if you don't deal with them. Which leads to my next statement, if anything like this happens again, I'm going to the teachers and telling them everything. I'd rather risk being kicked out of the hero program than seeing you end up hurt or worse. Ida's eyes started watering and then he bowed to his classmates. You two didn't have to come save me and yet you risked your lives without question. Your kindness is one that can never be repaid. Todoroki with an emotionless facial expression put one hand on his shoulder before he said. If you really want to pay us back then get some help and deal with your feelings before they eat you up inside. Izuku chuckled then looked at them both and said. I wouldn't mind lunch being on you today as well. They all laughed before making their way to homeroom. As the three entered the class Izuku spotted Bakugo's hair and had to cover his mouth at the sight. Shoto grinned then took his seat, but Midoriya ran to the boys' lavatory. Class 1 BNC heard the sounds of laughter coming from the vent connected to the adjacent room. Once his laughing fit ended Izuku made his way back to class and took his seat. When Momo saw that Izuku's eyes were red and puffy she leaned over to ask. Hey is everything okay? You look like you've been crying. He nodded then pointed at Bakugo's hair, when she saw it, she let out a small snort before covering her mouth to contain her laugh. Kaminari was the first person to say it aloud. Bakugo, what's up with that hair? Most of the students burst into laughter from the odd hairstyle the blonde was wearing, but Hugo then jumped over to Kaminari trying to blast him with his quirk which inadvertently returned his hair to normal. The day went on as usual and later All Might announced their next hero lesson would be in rescues. The class shouted in excitement wanting to put to the test what they learned during their internships. First group up was Ida, Saro, Ashido, Ajiro and Midoriya. All Might then laid out the rules stating he would be at the center of the practice area, while the students would start from five different locations racing to see who would get there first. Mineta was the first to say something. I think Saro has this one in the bag. Eurerica spoke next. 
No, I think Ida is gonna win this one. He's super fast. Yayo Iorozu said to herself. I wonder how Izuku will do in the race? I've never seen him go all out before. All of the participants in the group made it to their starting points and got ready. Izuku limbered up then activated one for all at 60%, when the alarm sounded signaling the racers to go Sero rocketed into the air using his tape. Ashido used her natural agility to make her way up the pipes and slid on her acid to glide along them. Ajiro used his tail as a boost to speed up his movement as he traversed the obstacle course, while Ida used his engines to propel him as quickly as they could towards All Might. When Saro thought he was going to take this one home something green went shooting past him like a bullet out of the chamber. Using Black Whip to launch him up and over the makeshift city, Izuku shot past everyone else using the pipes as a guided path to his target. It took him 30 seconds to reach All Might shattering the previous record holder's time. All Might congratulated his pupil on a job well done and told him to meet him in the teacher's lounge after class. When the races concluded all of the students headed back to their respective locker rooms to get changed. Mineta had tripped and accidentally tore down a poster on the wall, it revealed a hole that went straight through to the girl's side. He started drooling at the thought of getting a chance to peek. Look guys we've hit the jackpot, someone has blessed us with an opportunity to see more of Ashido's pink skin, Asu's bountiful bosom or Yeo Iorozu's. Clang. That's when the sound of a locker slamming stopped the great head boy mid-sentence, everyone looked up and saw it was Midoriya's locker that made the noise. He let out a deep sigh then raised his head, he then turned around to face the great head. Hey Mineta, let me ask you something. Mineta was a little nervous at his sudden inquiry, but he responded. What is it Midoriya? Izuku then went on with his question. Do you have a sister? Mineta puzzled by the random question said. No, why would you ask me that? Izuku walked towards the boy before he went on to say. Well, if you did have a sister and someone from her school was peeping on her like you're trying to do with our classmates, how would that make you feel? Mineta didn't answer he just sat there with a dumbfounded look on his face. Izuku finished his statement as he made his way out of the locker room. An even better question is what if one of those girls had a brother like Bakugo, what do you think he would do when he found out? Maybe you should think about that before continuing your perverted ways. After listening to all of that Todoroki walked over to the hole and filled it with his ice, Ida then said. I'll inform maintenance about the hole, so they'll come to repair it immediately. As the hole filled up with ice Jiro pulled her earphone jack from the wall and disconnected it from her phone. The girls all looked at each other before Toru said. I'm glad somebody finally put that twerp in his place. Mina then replied to that by saying. Yeah, Midoriya is such a great guy, I wonder if he's single. That's when the sound of a locker closing loudly got everyone's attention as Momo went to leave now fully dressed. Jiro then said. What's up with Yeo Mamo? Mina shrugged her shoulders then said. Maybe she's got a thing for muscles. The rest of the girls all shrugged then continued getting dressed. Later that afternoon Izuku sat in thought after All Might told him about his battle with All for One. Izuku gathered his thoughts then he said. So that's the guy who injured you in that fight five years ago. All Might nodded yes then Izuku said. I'm going to punch him in his stupid face the first chance I get. All Might looked at his successor curiously then let out a small laugh, the boy joined in on it before saying. I wonder why the previous users hadn't mentioned any of this to me yet, they've only helped me with my quirks so far. All Might then said. Can you communicate with them at will yet? Izuku shook his head no before saying. I've only been able to talk with them when I'm in a sleep-like state so far. All Might then replied. Oh, I see well don't let that deter you. The time I can use my quirk is shrinking every day it seems. 
I must make sure you're ready before I'm no longer able to be the symbol of peace anymore. Izuku looked at his teacher seeing a hint of sadness in his eyes. He stood up then said. No one can take that from you All Might, you're more than just your quirk. People look up to you because of what you do and stand for, it had nothing to do with how strong you are. You'll always be the symbol of peace. Toshinori looked back at his green-haired successor with pride, he transformed into his hero state before saying. Thank you young Midoriya, I hope I can always live up to your kind words. Izuku just smiled and said. Anytime sir. The next day Mr. Aizawa broke the news that the finals were coming up and the class should prepare themselves. Once he left the room everyone voiced their concerns and worries about how they'll do on the written part. Izuku overheard Toru talking to Tsu about how cold she was during her internship. She complained about her costume choice being limited due to her quirk, he interjected himself into their conversation by saying. Hey Toru, my friend and support could definitely help with that, her name is Hatsume and I'm sure she could make you an item that'll work with your quirk. Toru's floating shirt turned to the boy before he heard her say. That would be awesome, you mind introducing me to her? He nodded then said. Sure, let me know when you're ready and we'll head over there. Not too long after they grabbed their bags and headed over to the support studio. As they arrived at the hall where the lab was, Izuku stopped about 5 feet away from the door. Toru was puzzled by this and asked. Hey Midoriya, why did we stop right here? Aren't we gonna knock? Izuku smirked then stuck both of his arms out like he was expecting something before saying. Just give it a second. Suddenly the door to the lab blew open from a small explosion inside, Mei came flying out of it and landed into Izuku's arms. There was smoke and small pieces of debris scattered throughout the hall, Hatsume was covered in suit and coughing. Once she caught her breath she said. Hey Midoriya, nice catch you're getting good at that you know. Izuku replied. Hello Hatsume, I see another one of your babies blew up on you but I'm glad to see you're okay. She just grinned then said. Are you here to test out more of my babies for me? The green haired boy shook his head no before saying. Not today but I did bring someone that could use your help. Hatsume got down from the boy's arms then looked beside him to see, a girl's school uniform being worn by someone who was apparently invisible, she then said. Ooh, a mutation type quirk I'll definitely need a DNA sample from you in the future but come on in. May grabbed both students and dragged them into the lab, Toru still confused by all of what she was seeing said. Hello, I'm Toru Hagakure nice to meet you. Midoriya said you might be able to help me with my costume. You see because of my quirk I have to be nude to fully utilize it. You could see why that could be bad especially in the winter. Hatsume tapped her chin for a second then went over to a tall cabinet. She started searching for something then pulled out what looked to be a spandex outfit. She walked over to the invisible girl then said. Here touch this. Although he couldn't see it Izuku was pretty sure that Toru was just as confused by this as he was. The girl took a hold of the outfit and it started to turn invisible right along with her. Izuku's eyes grew wide at the sight and then he heard Toru shriek in excitement. Mei smiled before saying. Baby number 113, responsive fibers are woven into clothes to react to a person's quirk. I'm thinking about calling it shapewear. Izuku then said. Wow Hatsume, you never cease to amaze me when it comes to your inventions you're truly a genius, now this isn't going to blow up too is it? Mei smiled then said. No, no reactive chemicals are in that baby yet, but I could add some if you would like. Toru responded immediately. No 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 it'll be fine just like this, thank you so much this is perfect. Izuku couldn't help but smile at the sight of his friend dancing with her new support item. The written exam stretched over three days and seemed like torture for a few students. 
Once they were finally done Kaminari passed out from the grueling exam, Ashidal threw some papers into the air in celebration. Hooray, it's finally over. Tsu said in response. Ribbit, I can't argue with you on that. Takoyami then said. Revelry in the dark. Dark shadow popped out of him right after that to say. What he said. The two then sighed and slid back in the seat gesturing how tired they were. Izuku on the other hand didn't feel the same. After studying non-stop every day for the exam with everyone else, he felt more than ready for the test. What truly concerned him was why and the other teachers were so secretive about the practical part of the final exam. He had heard from Kendo that it would involve robots, but it seemed too predictable to believe. Even when he asked All Might about it all he could say was it's going to be a combination of everything you've learned so far. The students of Class 1A gathered outside of Field Gamma for the start of the practical, Kirishima then said. I wonder why all of the teachers are here. In front of the class stood Midnight, Ectoplasm, Cementus, Snipe, Power Loader, Eraser Head, Present Mike and Principal Nizu. Nizu then said. Now students I'm sure that you've been doing some reconnaissance to figure out what your test will involve, but we've decided to change things up from our typical curriculum. The teens grew worried seeing as though they thought fighting robots would be the premise of their test. Nizu went on to say. We didn't want to make your test so simple this year and wanted to push you all to your limits. So, for your final exams you'll be facing us. All the pro heroes then gave the students a menacing look in hopes of intimidating the young heroes in training, class 1A sweat dropped at this new information. Aizawa then said. You each will be paired off into teams of two, your assignment will be to either capture your opponent using these special cuffs or for one of you to escape through a designated exit. Kirishima activated his quirk then pounded his fist together before exclaiming. I'm ready for whatever they throw at us, so let's do this. Tsu put her finger to her chin as she thought aloud. This might be tougher than we thought, our teachers are pro heroes after all. Mina then cried out. How is that fair? You guys are way stronger than us. That's when All Might came leaping down from the sky, as he hit the ground the concrete cracked around his feet. With his signature smile on his face, he said. That's why we'll be wearing these weighted restraints during the test, it'll slow us down and drain our stamina giving you all a fighting chance. Mr. Aizawa then read off the pairing for the test. Todoroki and Yeo Iorozu you'll be facing me, Takoyami and Asu you'll be facing ectoplasm. Aizawa went down his list but when he finished Aizuku noticed that his name hadn't been called yet, but Hugo also noticed the same thing. That's when Aizawa said. And for you too. Aizuku then looked over to Bakugo who was already staring at him before he heard All Might say. You'll be facing me. Bakugo and the green-haired boy both thought to themselves. Shit. The teachers did not hold their punches in hopes of showing the students that their enemies wouldn't either. As Momo and Shoto started planning their strategy Todoroki said. How do you think we should handle this? Momo said in response. It seems like believes we're going to rely heavily on our quirks to win. That's why he chose us to be partners, he plans on erasing our quirks. Todoroki then responded. So, what do you suggest we do? Yayoi Orozu then thought to herself for a second before she came up with an answer. Got it, we'll just use something he can't erase. When the test began Eraser Head was hot on his students' trails, he saw the pair running towards the exit, but he quickly caught up to them. He launched some kunai into their path stopping their movement, seeing this the two split up in opposite directions. Picking the slower of the two eraser head went after Yeo Iorozu, he cut her off and quickly bounded both of her hands together with his capture scarf. Throwing one end of his scarf over a street lamp, he started yanking her up when something fell right in front of him. 
He heard a click and that's when a bright flash went off blinding the pro. He tried covering his eyes, but it was too late. He jumped back trying to get some distance and out of nowhere got hit with a projectile. Following its trajectory he saw Yeo Iorozu with a rifle firing rubber bullets. He dodged the oncoming shots and swiftly knocked the gun out of her hands. She leapt over his jab and pulled out two tompas to fend him off. He wrapped one of them in his binding scarf and yanked it away, but before he went in for another assault, he felt a cold breeze at his rear. The pro turned around activating his quirk and leapt into the air expecting to see the bicolored teen using his ice, but what he saw instead was a high-powered fan. That's when he heard the sound of something being shot out of a cannon coming from behind. By the time he saw what it was, a net had captured him dragging the pro to the ground. After he landed eraser head rolled over trying to free himself, using his knife to cut a hole in the net he reached out with one of his arms then felt someone grab it before hearing a click. That's when he sat up to see Todoroki clamping the capture cuff around his wrist and Yeo Iorozu standing beside him looking exhausted from creating their weapons and trying to catch her breath. She then spoke. We knew you were going to erase our quirks. Todoroki then said. So, we made you think we were using them. Aizawa just grinned at his students then said. Good job, you both pass. Unfortunately for Ishido, Kirishima, Sato, Saro, and Kiminari things didn't go as well. They all failed the practical and would have extra lessons during the summer camp because of it. The last test for the day consisted of Izuku and Bakugo vs All Might. No one saw this match upcoming and couldn't figure out how these two were going to work together. Izuku had already arrived at the site awaiting on his partner, when Bakugo got there he said. Look Bakugo, I know you're still mad, but we have to pass this together or we're both gonna fail. So, let's just put aside our rivalry to pass this test. I have a plan that I think will work. Bakugo looked at him then said. Let me guess you want to run away from him, and hope we're fast enough to make it, or better yet you probably want to play dead so that he'll think he beat us without even trying. Piss off, I'll beat him myself and you can just go give up like you always do. Izuku folded his arms then just replied to the blonde while shaking his head. Whatever you say, I'll be right here when you're ready to listen. All Might then landed down the street from the boys, he let out an ominous laugh as he saw Bakugo approaching him. So, you've decided to face me alone huh hero? Using his quirk to propel himself at All Might Bakugo aimed his hand at the pro then yelled out. I'm all we'll need to take you down. Bakugo let off a huge point blank explosion decimating the entire area around All Might. Feeling good that his blast hit its target he waited for the smoke to clear. What stood from the cloud was an unfazed All Might with his fist cocked back. Seeing this Izuku said to himself. I tried to tell him. Bakugo went to fire off another blast, but All Might hit him square in the face causing him to fly back at high speeds. He landed a few feet behind his partner crashing into a trash can. Izuku just stood there watching things unfold, but Hugo got back to his feet then rocketed towards All Might with explosions in his hands. He was struck with another punch attempting to hit All Might and sent flying back in the opposite direction. He got right back up and tried attacking the pro but was met with another strong impact to his torso causing him to roll backwards stopping right in front of his former friend. He looked up to see Izuku standing there gazing down at him with one hand sticking out, but Hugo begrudgingly grabbed his former friend's hand then stood back to his feet. But Hugo then said. You said something about a plan. Izuku then finally spoke again. Yeah, just follow me. Izuku then grabbed a nearby broken down car and threw it at All Might, the pro caught it with no problem then said. You got to do much better if boom. Suddenly a grenade went off that was attached to the car blinding All Might in the process and helping the two boys escape. Once All Might realized what happened, he took off into the city looking for the boys. 
After a few minutes he came across a sewer lid that was slightly ajar, seeing this as a clue he went over to it and lifted it up. In doing this he set off a trip wire connected to another grenade, being on guard this time All Might quickly used the sewer lid to block the blast. After avoiding that he saw another car flying in his direction, he went to punch it out of the air and was hit in the back with a huge explosion. Izuku wearing one of Bakugo's gauntlets said as the blast went off. Got you. Knowing this wouldn't stop the pro he jumped up expecting him to retaliate, All Might sprung into the air after his pupil when he was hit with another large explosion. All Might went flying into a building causing it to come down on him, but Hugo screamed out as the device went off. Now die. Izuku then said. Come on we gotta go while he's down. That's when they both heard. Idaho smash. Before Izuku could react, All Might had recovered and closed lined him into a nearby building, seeing this Bakugo used some rapid fire attacks to slow the pro down. Being dazed from a hit like that Izuku staggered while getting back to his feet. When he saw his teammate giving it his all against the number one hero, Izuku knew this was going to hurt but he pushed his limit of 1 for all to 80% then charged All Might with all he had. Toshinori seen his protege coming and kicked his other opponent to the side to block the punch. Izuku screamed out. Detroit smash. This attack nearly matching All Might's strength pushed the pro back, but he took the blow with ease. All Might responded with an attack of his own, matching his pupil's speed, he struck him with equal force. Taking the hit Izuku slid back and was able to stay on his feet for a little bit but eventually ended up falling due to the attack. He bounced back then charged at his teacher while All Might did the same, they both yelled out. Detroit smash. Using his attack as a feint Izuku got close and dropped his striking hand to his side then jumped up before saying. Seattle smash. Catching All Might off guard with his maneuver, the pro was hit by a hurricane kick to the face, and it sent him crashing through a few buildings. The green-haired boy's muscles started to spasm as he walked over to his teammate. He picked him up then started running away, but Hugo came to as he felt himself being carried by someone. Not wanting to feel like he was helpless but Hugo to him. Put me down you nerd, I'll walk on my own. Listening to what he said Izuku dropped him on the ground. Bakugo then screamed. Why the hell did you do that? You damn nerd. Izuku just said in response. You asked me to put you down, so I did. As the blonde went to go after his partner, he saw All Might punch Midoriya through a building sending him crashing through wall after wall. All Might then spoke. Never take your eyes off of an opponent, unless you're sure he's taken care of. Bakugo then jumped on All Might's back grabbing him by the hair, he put one of his hands over his mouth and said. Bottoms up. A large explosion went off in the face of the number one hero, sending Bakugo back to the ground writhing in agony from overusing his quirk. When the smoke cleared All Might stood there with scorch marks on his teeth and his hair was in a large smoky puffball. This image made the onlookers in the monitor's box laugh hysterically, the pro then said. That was a spicy meatball. After letting out a smoke-filled burp, that's when Izuku came flying back into the fight colliding with the pro. As All Might intercepted the boy's punch, he said. Nice try but I know all your little tricks by now young Midoriya. Izuku looked up then said. Not all of them All Might. The next thing All Might knew he felt Midoriya's knee strike his wound, which brought him to the ground in pain. As he grabbed his side while standing back up, he saw his protege carrying his blonde friend towards the exit. While running away Izuku was feeling bad then thought. I'm sorry All Might but we have to pass this test. He started to take off after the boys, but he felt the pain getting worse, he coughed up some blood then decided to call it quits for the day. All Might then said to himself. He used his opponent's weakness to his advantage, I was afraid he wasn't going to be strong enough to make that decision. 
But it seems I was wrong about the boy, he'll be just fine. Izuku ended up carrying an unconscious Bakugo right through the exit ensuring that both of them passed the practical before he collapsed. Izuku woke up to the sound of machines beeping in recovery girl hitting All Might with her cane. Seeing this made him smile. I'm just glad it wasn't me this time. Whack. Recovery girl then struck Izuku in his head, making him rub his new bump before he thought. I spoke too soon. Recovery girl looked at the both of them while saying. Why would you go all out like that knowing what would happen? And you young man. She looked at Midoriya before she continued. You had over 40 strained muscles to go along with your fractures due to you going past your limit, you keep that up and you'll end up with permanent damage. Izuku looked at his body then said. I'm sorry recovery girl I promise it won't happen again, for now on I'll be more careful. Izuku then looked over to notice that Bakugo was sleeping on the bed next to him, not wanting him to overhear their conversation All Might pulled Izuku away from the beds and into the office before asking him. In celebration of you passing your final exam how would you like to be my plus one while I attend an award ceremony on I Iceland? All Might looked down to see his green-haired pupil with glossy eyes muttering. I Island, the famous research facility, I Iceland, you're plus one on the island. All Might then tried getting his attention. Hello, Earth to Midoriya. But the boy was in a daze, so the pro just said. I'll take that as a yes. When the testing was done announced that everyone will be going to the summer camp, even the five people who failed the practical. If it wasn't for the fact that everyone passed the written test they would have been an even more torment through extra lessons. Once the summer break was officially started, Class 1A decided to go shopping at Kiyashi Ward Mall together. Everyone came except for Todoroki who usually visited his mother on the weekends in Bakugo because he's Bakugo. Most of the girls headed to a department store with the rest of the guys to buy swimsuits for Cam. Ida, Yeo Iorozu and Izuku were all walking together when Ida said. Oh, I see a few things over there I could use. Spotting a sporting goods store Ida took off leaving the two by themselves. Momo then said. So, what do you need to pick up for Cam? Izuku responded. I need some bug spray and... Izu. The pair turned around and saw a girl with green hair leaping onto Izuku embracing him in a big hug. The green haired boy hugged her back then said. Hey Amiko, long time no see how are you doing? Seeing this Momo's eye started to twitch but luckily for her Izuku didn't notice it yet. The girl released the boy then said. I missed you a lot, but I see you move on fast. Momo's eyebrows raised at hearing this and then she looked at Izuku before he said. What, oh no it's not like that we are just friends. Let me introduce you to my classmate, Momo Yeo Iorozu. Momo smiled and said. Nice to meet you and you are. The green haired girl then replied with. Where are my manners? I'm Amiko Ogawa, sorry for just interrupting like that. Momo then responded. No worries I guess you guys know each other pretty well. Emiko said in reply. Yeah, we used to date until I had to move but I'll never forget my Izu. He was my first love after all. Izuku's face grew a little red at that statement before he said. Stop embarrassing me. Izuku blushed then said. So, what are you doing here? Emiko smiled then said. I'm in town staying with my mother for the week while my dad is away on business. I came here to do a little shopping and luckily I ended up running into you. Momo felt like she was prying in on a private conversation, so she said. I'll let you guys catch up and just head over here. Izuku shot Momo a look of desperation while grabbing her hand before blurting out. How about we all go get something to eat and talk? Emiko said. Sounds good, I'm starving. She grabbed Izuku by the arm and started dragging him to the food court. 
He leaned back and whispered to Yayoi Orozu. Thank you. She smiled then followed behind the two as they continued walking. For 28 continuous minutes Amiko talked non-stop without catching a breath before her phone rang, it turned out to be her mother needing her help with something. The green-haired girl got up then hugged the UA students before waving goodbye and promising to come back more often. Momo finally being able to speak said. What did you see in her again? Izuku looking exhausted just looked over to his friend and said. Yeah, it's because of her quirk, it's called high vitality if I'm not mistaken, it gives her lots of energy which she uses to constantly talk. Oh, I see well after all that I need some aspirin. Momo said in response while rubbing her temples, she got up and walked over to a nearby convenience store. While he was sitting there alone, suddenly Izuku's danger sense went off and someone said. Hey, I know you you're the kid who came in second place at the sports festival. Would you mind taking a picture with me? Someone in a black hoodie took a seat right next to Izuku and threw his arm over the boy's shoulders. Before Izuku could move he felt four fingers make their way around his neck, he started to remove the man's arm before he heard. Now now there, you wouldn't want me to use my quirk on you, would you? That's when the man finally showed his face and Izuku locked eyes with him. It all dawned on the boy exactly who he was and what was going on. You're the one who attacked the USJ and brought the Nomus to Hosu City. Shigoriki then said. Yes, I did all that and yet all anyone can talk about is that bastard stain. I don't understand why he gets all the credit while we did all the heavy lifting. Momo was walking back to the food court when she saw Izuku with a look of panic on his face. She surveyed the situation and realized he was in trouble. Momo then hurried and ducked behind a nearby column across from where he was sitting. She used the mirror in her purse to reflect the light and get Izuku's attention. Seeing this he signaled for her to wait until she sees an opening, she understood then got ready. Izuku then said. So, what do you want with me? Shigoriki then said. I wanted to ask you, what does Stain have that I don't? Why does everyone admire him but ignore me? Izuku then said. It's because everyone understands his objective and you're just a dumbass with hands all over his face. Shigoriki angered by the boy's words cracked a smile then said. You really are a fool to have said that to me, I hope that was worth it kid. Shigoriki placed his last finger around Izuku's neck and waited to hear the sound of someone trying to scream while gargling their own blood, but it never happened. Shigoriki looked down to see something black covering the boy's neck and chest coming from the teen's hands. While the villain was distracted Izuku grabbed Shigoriki by the wrist and flipped him over the table, he jumped away when the villain started to stand. As Shigoriki got to his feet his face was met by a pair of boots courtesy of Momo drop kicking him and sending the man flying into the tables behind where they sat. Izuku rushed over to Momo's side helping her to her feet, then they witnessed a purple portal open up right beneath Shigoriki as he escaped. The police were notified and the students' parents were called in to pick them up once they gave their statements. It was then that Izuku learned that the name of his attacker was Tamura Shigoriki, he instantly thought of the first wielder who shared that last name. Knowing that he couldn't bring that up in front of Detective Tsukachi, he told All Might he had something important to tell him later. All Might then said it's okay Tsukachi is one of my closest friends, he knows all about my true form. Shocked by this Izuku said. Well, if that's the case, it's nice to meet one of All Might's friends. What I was gonna say is that guy who attacked me, he has the same last name as All for One's brother. All Might gasped then said. What? Are you sure? Izuku nodded and said. Yes, I'm positive. This news was very disturbing to the adults, but it would come in handy for their investigation into the lead. After the Midoriyas were dropped off back at home, Izuku went to say something to his mother before she cut him off. 
No matter what Izuku I want you to protect yourself at all times. This world is full of people who hate heroes for some reason, but I know you're going to change that one day. No matter what I'll always believe in you my son. Izuku was speechless just when he thought his mom might have been scared off because of another villain attack, for the second time in his life she shocked him with words he didn't expect. He then said, I love you mom and thank you for always believing in me. Izuku gave her a warm hug and then said, How about I cook dinner for you tonight? Ainko then said, What makes you think you weren't? After everything you put me through today it's the least you can do. She walked off leaving her son stuck and thinking. I should have saw that one coming. He chuckled then got dinner prepared once he cleaned up. As Izuku laid in bed going over the day's events, he felt his phone vibrate then turned over to see who it was. The message said. Feel like coming out to talk? I'll leave my knife at home this time. Even though he didn't recognize the number, he already knew who sent the message. 20 minutes later he made it to the roof of the building where he last saw the blonde girl, when he got to the roof, she was sitting next to the AC vent staring up at the sky. He sat down next to her then said. Are you hungry? I had some leftovers and thought you'd might like a home cooked meal. She took the box while thanking him before she tore open the wrapping to get to the food. About two hours later, the two were talking like they had been friends forever. All Might cannot act, that last movie he was in stunk up the theaters. Toga said furiously as she remembered going to see the film. All Might was the best part of it, what are you even talking about? Izuku said in defense to one of his favorite movies, out of nowhere the two arguing teens heard someone clearing their throat. Hello sensei and hey auntie Toga it's nice to see you again. The two turned to see what looked like a girl standing in a black cowl with a hood over her head, when she removed her hood, they saw she had gray hair and red eyes. The two teens looked at each other then Izuku said in response. Sensei. Toga then said right after that. Auntie. End of chapter 8.